Are faster reps or slower reps better for muscle growth? When you perform faster reps, you can typically lift more weight. On the other hand, with slower reps, you have much longer eccentric contractions, which leads to more muscle breakdown. So today, we're gonna to review what science has to say about which one of these strategies is best to build muscle faster and improve your overall body composition. First, we have to start with something known as repetition tempo. As the name implies, this is the actual term used by researchers to describe how fast you perform reps for a certain exercise. As I already mentioned, most exercises include an eccentric phase and a concentric phase. The eccentric phase refers to the portion of the movement where the target muscle lengthens. For example, your bicep is in the eccentric phase when you lower the weight down during the curl. The muscle lengthens while maintaining tension to prevent the weight from entering into free fall. The concentric phase refers to the phase where the target muscle shortens. For example, your bicep is in the concentric phase when you lift the weight during a curl. The muscle needs to shorten with enough force to overcome gravity. So usually you hear trainers giving the advice that you should go extra slow on the way down and explode on the way up to optimize muscle growth. But is that actually true? Well, in a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, researchers had participants perform three sets of six to 10 reps to failure, either with a traditional rep tempo of one to two seconds for each, the concentric and the eccentric contraction, or they did a slow 10 second concentric followed by a slow four second eccentric contraction. Both groups aimed to progress as fast as they could in the amount of weight that they could lift and the amount of muscle they could grow which was measured through muscular biopsies, which is actually considered one of the highest quality measurement methods for this type of test. At the end of the study, researchers realized that the traditional training group increased their cross-sectional area of their leg muscle fibers by 26% in type one slow twitch fibers and 34% in type two fibers. Meanwhile, the slow tempo group only increased by 6% in type one and 15.5% in type two. Based on those results, we can say that faster reps were actually better for muscle growth when compared to very slow reps. In other studies, we look at something known as TUT, which stands for time under tension, and essentially refers to how many seconds it takes from start to the end of your sets, so it includes time for both the concentric and the eccentric phases. Most people believe that the longer overall time you have under tension, the more muscle you will build, and this is simply not true. For example, taking six seconds to do a dumbbell curl was proven to be no better for muscle growth than taking two seconds. Another study found that performing reps at a fixed speed of four seconds per rep instead of a naturally self-selected speed led to a decrease in both muscle activation and training volume. So does all the available research support faster reps only? Well, we have a meta-analysis that evaluated eight different studies and found no statistically significant difference between repetition speed and muscle growth. With that said, when you look at the effect sizes for those studies, they do indicate that there was a trend for greater muscle growth for those training with a faster rep tempo. There's a chance that the duration of the study was simply not long enough to detect a statistically significant difference between the groups. That's why I believe this meta-analysis still indicates that faster tempos are actually better for building muscle, just as the other studies indicated. On top of that, the eight studies that were reviewed in the meta-analysis had many other limitations. One of those is that the studies were all performed on untrained individuals. You could question whether untrained individuals have the required exercise technique, coordination, and motivation to produce maximum muscle activation when performing an exercise faster. Which, by the way, that's the main way that a faster tempo could increase muscle growth. So, why might faster reps be more efficient for muscle growth? Well, the first reason is that studies show slowing down your reps reduces how much weight you can lift. Meanwhile, speeding up your reps can increase the number of reps that you can perform with a certain weight load. Everyone who's ever lifted weights will know that when you slow down your reps, you typically have to either lower the weight or drop the amount of reps that you're doing. What this means is that the total amount of mechanical tension that you could place on your muscle fibers will be lower with slow reps compared to fast reps. Not only is that worse from a muscle building standpoint, but a meta-analysis published in the Journal of Sports Medicine also found that it'll lead to reduced strength gains. If you have reduced strength gains, that means that you won't be able to lift as much weight during future sets than if you maintained a regular rep tempo. All of this reduces the amount of mechanical tension overload that you can produce, limiting muscle growth. 
Another benefit of fast reps is that they lead to higher levels of muscle activation than slow reps. This has to do with the Henneman size principle, which states that muscle fibers are recruited in order of size, roughly from slow twitch to fast twitch to meet force production demands. In simpler terms, slow twitch fibers tend to be active almost the entire time that you're exercising. Meanwhile, fast twitch fibers will only kick in when things get really tough. So by performing your reps explosively, your fast twitch fibers will be active throughout the entire set. Since fast twitch fibers are typically more associated with visible muscle growth, more explosive reps can provide a potent muscle building stimulus. If, on the other hand, you decide to do slow reps, your fast twitch fibers would only become activated later on in the set after the slow twitch fibers can no longer produce enough force output to lift the resistance up. So with slower reps, your fast twitch fibers will get less muscle building stimulation. So I'm sure by now you're probably wondering, isn't there scientific research that indicates that slow eccentric contractions are better for muscle growth? Well, some studies do in fact indicate that slow eccentrics produce more muscle growth than faster eccentrics, which is why many people believe that lowering the weight slowly leads to more muscle growth, which isn't necessarily the case according to the meta-analysis that we just talked about earlier. The issue is that in many of the studies that support slower contractions on the way down, the eccentric portion of a contraction is studied in isolation without also factoring in the opposing concentric contraction. On top of that, almost every study that shows that slow eccentrics are better uses a form of eccentric overloading. The scientists use equipment that raises the load during the eccentric phase but lowers it during the concentric phase. So there's a heavier resistance when lowering the weight compared to when lifting it. If you have access to this type of equipment, then yes, it is beneficial to perform slower eccentrics. But since most of us don't have access to this equipment and we're mostly using barbells, dumbbells, cables, and machines that all maintain a consistent amount of tension when raising or lowering the weight load, slower eccentric contractions won't necessarily help you build more muscle. Now you can overload the eccentric contraction and benefit from slower reps in a few other ways. One easy way to understand is negatives on the bench press. Here you would use a very heavy weight with a partner spotting you and you would lower the weight very slowly towards your chest. Once you get to your chest, your partner should forcefully lift the weight up off of you as you press it up. This creates eccentric overload since you're lowering the full weight down to your chest but you're only lifting a partial amount of that weight back up since your partner is helping you. So in this situation, going slower on the way down can really pay off. Another way to take advantage of slower reps is with the 2-1 technique. With this technique, you're gonna perform the lifting portion of an exercise with two limbs, meanwhile the lowering portion with only one limb at a slow pace. This once again will lead to a strong eccentric overload. An example of this would be doing leg extensions. You could lift the weight up with two legs, but lower it down with only one. You can use many different machines to apply the same technique as long as the right and left sides are connected to a single weight load. Now, one final example of creating eccentric overload to take advantage of slow reps is by cheating during the concentric contraction. For example, let's say you're training shoulders with an overhead press. You could start the movement by using your legs to drive the weight up, which is actually known as a push press. And then you can very slowly lower the weight down for about four to five seconds. You can do this with many other exercises like pull-ups, for example. You could step onto a platform so that your chin is already up over the pull-up bar, and then you can slowly lower down. Once you're all the way down, step back up and repeat. For your chest, you can alternate between performing a dumbbell press on the way up and then a fly on the way down with the same weight load. Keep in mind, if you're a beginner, I don't recommend you focus on eccentric overload because beginners generally don't have the motor control to use this technique correctly. Besides, if you're a beginner, you don't really need these techniques because you can make enough gains with regular exercise. But if you're advanced, these techniques can be beneficial and slower reps could help you boost muscle growth by overloading the eccentric portion. With that said, even for those of you that are advanced, don't go overboard. Using these techniques is highly taxing on the body, which is why overdoing it may lead you to run into recovery issues and potentially an injury. So to fully tie everything together on whether you should do fast reps or slow reps to experience more muscle growth, here's what I recommend as an overall strategy. Spend most of your sets performing the concentric phase explosively. Doing so will likely increase muscle activation more than doing it slowly. And data also shows that a faster concentric can enhance strength gains. 
Now, even if you try to explode during the concentric, that doesn't mean that the weight will move fast. If you use a decent amount of weight, the reps can still look very slow, especially during the last few reps of each set. That's fine because it's all about the intention. Your intention should be to overcome the weight with as much force as possible, regardless of how fast the weight actually moves. Even though there's no direct high quality study that proves that faster concentric contractions lead to more muscle growth, there is evidence that working on explosiveness enhances both muscle activation and strength gains, making it more likely that your muscles grow faster over time. That's why I recommend that you perform the lift, press, or flex portion of any contraction with maximum force. Now when it comes to the eccentric contraction, I wouldn't focus too much on lowering it for a specific amount of time, such as 3 or 4 seconds. Instead, for most of your sets, lower the weight in such a way that it allows you to perform the maximum number of reps while still maintaining good form and controlling the weight the whole way down. At no point should the weight enter into free fall. If you're just dumping the weight down in an uncontrolled manner, you're most likely going way too fast on the eccentric portion. In addition, you can also use the 2-1 technique, negatives, or strategic cheating to overload the eccentric phase of an exercise. But only use these techniques sparingly if you're advanced because they're much more taxing on your body than doing regular sets like I already mentioned. So that about wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned some new applicable techniques and ideas about rep tempo and time under tension. If you liked the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you'd like to take the next step and you're looking for a simplified approach to burning fat and building muscle that's streamlined and comes with a full workout plan, a video exercise library, a customizable diet plan, a recipe book, and of course an accountability coach to help guide you through the whole process, then visit my website where you can get all of this for free just by putting your best foot forward and sticking to the plan. To find out more, click the link in the description below or simply visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.